For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, there are some that say they may be flippant Christians, but I notice there is a strong lack of fear uh, that you can sense in them. Do they fear God, either by what they're doing or by what they're preaching, or how they go about preaching, how they approach the topic sin? Do they take it lightly? Do you take sin lightly or flippantly? Uh, as you know, uh, Paul wrote in Timothy, uh, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. However, when it comes to fearing God, there are several, several verses uh, in Scripture. Uh, I'm going to give some out of the Old Testament and some out of the New that shows that you must have a fear of God, a healthy fear of God, dear friend. And if you are a Christian, you will realize who God is. Once you develop that fear of God, it will give you that uh, inclination, it will give you that motivation to realize what it is that sin did to our Savior on the cross and the magnitude of his suffering on the cross so let's just go to, uh, I'm going to do some out of the Old Testament and some out of the New to prove to you that fear of God is very healthy in a Christian life. It is not only healthy, but it's promoted in the Bible. And Abraham said, because I thought, surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. And he said, let not thine hand, lay not thine hand upon the lad. Neither do thou anything unto him, for I know now that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Joseph said unto them the third day, This do I and live, for I fear God. Ye shall not therefore oppress one another, but thou shalt fear thy God, for I am the Lord your God. Thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, but thou shalt fear God. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him thou shalt serve, and to him thou shalt cleave and swear by his name. That all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that ye may fear the Lord your God forever. Now going to the New Testament, these are direct words from Jesus. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. In Luke, it was said like this, but I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Now this is Jesus talking in Luke 12, 5. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath the power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. The thief on the cross that repented, he said this. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost thou now fear God, seeing thou art also in the same condemnation? Another verse, There is no fear of God before their eyes. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. And as you know, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So I say to you now, if you do not have the fear of God in you, after I just read all of these verses to you in the Bible, then you're lacking something in your Christian faith. Once you are born again and you realize who God is, what he has done, what he is capable of doing. Uh, I was speaking to my mother the other day and, uh, I was speaking about the two that sold their land uh, and they came in and uh, Peter uh, rebuked them when they had held back a portion 
of their uh, of what they had sold of their land, and they kept some. And Peter rebuked them, and God struck them down instantly. struck the, struck the husband down, and then the female came in, and Peter, uh, before she even uh, realized what was going on, Peter talked to her. Boom! Struck her down. God can strike anyone down at any moment. Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, look at the uh, the man who touched the Ark of the Covenant just to try and get it back up into uh, to where it was. It tilted a little bit, and he just touched it, and God struck him dead instantly. Uh, look at when uh, Moses <clears throat> was at the uh, the mount there when he was. Uh, preaching the, the Ten Commandments to them, and they were uh, idolizing the, uh, the golden calf. And God brought that great earthquake, and many fell into the earthquake, and many died. And so I will tell you this, dear friend, if you are a Christian and you don't have a healthy fear of God, I suggest you read the Bible more and study more on the word fear. The root word of fear is over 500 times in the King James Bible. You can go to KJV online and just type in fear, and it will show you all the instances of where it's used and in the uh, verses where it talks about fearing God. This is just a small percentage I gave you. So what I'm trying to tell you, you may be one of those uh, flippant Christians who either laughs about sin or who laughs about people who rebuke you over sin. And I am telling you, once you know who God is and once you realize what he can do at any moment to you and to anybody, you will have that reverent, healthy fear of God. You don't fear what man can do to you. We don't have that spirit of fear of what anyone can do to us because if we're saved, we know where we're going and God holds us up. But we fear the one who made us, dear friend, for he is very powerful. We are but ashes and dust, like Abraham said uh, when he was uh, looking at Sodom and Gomorrah there. He said, Lord, I am but ashes and dust. So let me tell you something. I fear the Lord. I fear God. And I pray that you do too. And if you don't, again, I will just tell you, do some studying. Type in, go to YouTube and, t and look at fearing the Lord. It is not only healthy, uh, but it is wise to fear the Lord. And it will also help keep you from sin. It will help you realize that what you're doing has consequences. And uh, if you keep sowing to the flesh and not to the spirit, there will be consequences. If you are a born-again believer... You will be chastened, and you don't take that chastisement lightly. Uh, chastening from the Lord can be very grievous, uh, but you do not despise it. You fear the Lord, and you are grateful for his rod and staff. Like David said, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So again, thank you for watching. I pray that you will be wise, and I pray that you have the fear of the Lord inside you. God bless you.